Uh, hi, Neil. Uh, Lisa? Yes. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I couldn't wait. You're leaving? What? You're going somewhere? I'm not going somewhere, but I am reaching a point of high intoxication, and due to my extreme respect for both your music and your intelligence, I feel that it is important that I call you at this point cool. before I reach a point where I will be completely stupid. Okay. And you can just omit any answers to questions involving Jennifer. Okay. How does that sound? I'll give you her number. Her number? Oh, that's wonderful. I love this woman, and I'm so glad to have her number. Cool. Neil, you're extremely and doubly elusive. <laughs> With an E. Okay. Oh God, I hope I'm not too drunk. Well, um, um would you like? To that one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my first question. Right. Okay. Well, should I ask you the real questions I want to know, or should I ask you the the intellectual questions I wrote down? Oh. You got this tape, right? Uh, let me see. Yeah, the tape's rolling. Okay, then just fire away. Fire away? Yeah, you know. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, all right. I will read you the, my um, my sober questions first. Okay. okay. Here's my first one. All these people keep telling me stories about oil trucks, and none of the stories match at all. Can you offer any ins insight as to why people feel the need to talk about you and Jennifer, and why everyone comes up with such incongruous ideas about you? Well, I mean, I think we really got something. I do, too. And, um... Hold on one second, though, before you finish answering this question. Are you on any kind of downers? Yeah. Yeah, you sound it, because last night you were so excited and uh, enthusiastic, and now you sound really slow motion. Yeah, I was off yesterday, and then I... Why are they giving you downers? Keep me from going out. That's terrible. I would like you to be up. Yeah. What does downer what what do downers do to your intelligence? Nothing. What do they do? Just make you talk slower? Yeah. I guess it it probably changes the perception of you know, my intelligence, but Why do they want game. why do they want you to be slower? Uh well yeah, it has something to do with my blood pressure. Oh withdrawal symptoms. They're down uh, here in Sweet Virginia, I, they think that it's like, the doctor's really incompetent. Okay. Are there any nurses that can hear you right now, or doctors? Nah, fuck Good. They're, well, they're incompetent, they're incompetent, and like, so they give you basically blood pressure medicine. Why? That's, that's how they handle the withdrawal symptoms. Are you a heroin addict? Yes. Oh, do you, do you think that's a good thing to be, or are you... Are you uh, obviously, I guess you don't think it's too good to be since you're trying to get well, off of it. I, you know, I'm in here really because I, um, I, you know, I got, I'm being, I just got caught doing some shit. Oh, Neil, I'm so sorry to hear your voice so fluid like this. Really? I, yeah, I really oh, like oh, you. Okay, here we go. No, I, you know, I really like you, and I, um, I really want you to be all set, you know. I'm really sad. God, I, I hate being intoxicated. I sound so stupid, but I'm really sorry to, to hear you drugged like this. I mean, on, on hospital uh, drugs. And I can't reject it. I like them. <laughs> you like them? Yeah. You like to be down? Yeah, you know, okay, listen, go, keep, keep talking. You know, that's what, that's what I was, that's what I was talking to about today. I was saying, I, I don't think I would be a heroin addict because I really hate pleasure, and I really hate being spaced out, and that's, I think that is, you know, I was trying to think today if I could ever be a heroin addict, and I was thinking no, because I hate pleasure. I think it's so awful because it takes your mind off of what you're trying to have your mind on. And so I guess if you're a heroin addict, you're really going to like downers and you're really going to like being in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah? So, so you do like it. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> it's something you have to do with probably one flavor of the cuckoo's nest or something like that. I read that book. Yeah, I think, you know, just a lot of the, like, you know, I'm the kind of person that will, like, you know, I try to find constrictive. You, wait.
wait, wait, oh, hold on one second. I'm really sorry, Neil. I'm very intoxicated, and it's very difficult for me to understand what you're saying. Are you saying that you do like res being restricted? Well, I like to search. No, I don't like it at all, of course, but I mean, I like to search out certain places. You know, like, uh, you know, I'll go and do things, you know, that like, get me in trouble and just try to, you know, so just to push against the thing, you know. Neil, you know, I really like you, and I, yeah. I really respect you, and I really like that you push against things. So now tell me, um, is it true that you got the highest mark ever in the history of the computer school that you applied to? That's what they said, yeah, that's what they said. And then, and then you got kicked out? Yeah. Um, why? Tardiness. Tardiness? You were always late? Yeah. And, and they kicked you out for that? What? They kicked you out for being late? You can't miss more than eight hours, right? So I was I had to drive into the city every morning. Why were you tardy? Just I had to drive into the city to score every morning. Are you allergic to the sun? Mm, no, I like the sun. Do you have a suntan, Neil? No. Um, I like to look at the sun through windows more than rather than being outside. Hmm. So I like the beach in the winter. Me too. I love it at night. Coney Island, man, we used to go out there a lot. Just drunk as fuck. <laughs> drunk as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> great. No, I'm afraid they're destroying your brain cells. They are? I'm afraid. No, don't worry about it, man. Believe me. I really care brain about brain. your brain cells more than I care about my brain cells. That's not possible. I, I do. I'm really upset about it. Wait, let me go on with the story. Okay. okay, so then you got, so then your parents kicked you out of their house. Well, yeah, I stayed there for about two months. I thought you said fuck you to your teacher. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I did, I, yeah, but that wasn't anything. <laughs> so that wasn't why you got kicked out. You actually got kicked out because of tidiness and you said fuck you just for fun. Yeah, later on. Okay. Okay. You were high. Oh, I was always high. Drugs. Yeah, drugs are nice. Oh, are you are you complimenting me by referring to my my yeah. album? Uh, no, that's probably one of the top ten greatest albums. Oh, thank you, Neil. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy that you that you reflect my respect. Okay. So, um, what made you decide to go to school in the first place, or was this back to school? I Oh, well, I had a scheme whereby I would, you know, be making enough money to have to support this habit, you know, I, it was just ridiculous, really. Why do you want to support your habit, Neil? Why don't you just care about your music? Why do you want to do heroin? It doesn't interfere. It's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. Oh, I think, I just think that heroin is so boring. It's just like, it's just like marijuana, uh, marijuana but more. Well, it, it just makes you sit there, Neil. Yeah, but just sit there and, yeah, sit Do you there. like to just sit there and draw, Neil? Yeah, but what's happening? I mean, see, that's... Let's that, take that back to what you said about, you know, you want to hear my voice sounding a certain way, why the people have such conflicting stories about me. This is, a, this is what I like to push against the most. I mean, just perception, you know. Well, look where it, look where it landed, you Neil. What's you're you're talking with a slurred voice. That's what happened to you. It got you in trouble, and they they got you in the hospital, and you have a slurred voice now. I know that I have a slurred voice because I'm intoxicated, but I don't care about myself. I just care about you. And there you are, and your voice is slurred. And I hate to think of what this is doing to your brain cells at this very second. They're, they're destroying your brain. I'm really upset. It's just giving me anaprox, man. It's not even narcotic. Oh, it isn't? No. It's oh. like a muscle relaxer. And, they, and clonidine. Which Do your muscles feel really relaxed? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, so I'm probably a little tired. I don't know. Are you really tired? Do you want to go to sleep? No. Okay. Um, okay, I shall... Have you ever answered my first question? Did you answer about why these people have such different and incongruous ideas about you? Well, yeah, I mean, that's part of what, like, it's part of my idea of what Royal Trucks is. And and what's that? Of, well, like, it's a long journey, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it would really suck to get caught, you know, in one thing just that way. 
how did you get caught? Oh, oh I, just, I got caught about things. But this is, this is only, you know, this is a couple of weeks, and then we're off again, man, you know. Are I you... Hear, but I had nowhere, I really had nowhere to live. Are you playing a masquerade? No. But that's something that's... That's cool. I mean, as an idea. What, what... I mean, overall, no. What's the idea? As a ma like a masquerade, like a mean a ball. Yeah. Something like that. I had a dream I was Henry... Whatever that man that hung, that cut off the heads, I was his wife, and I was at a masquerade ball, and I had my head cut off. Really? Yeah. What's the last job you had, Neil? I was working, um, I was working for Outreach Affiliates Incorporated, uh, raising money over the phone for, uh, Rainforest in California. Phone sales. Fundraising. Fundraising. Actually, I didn't even get on the phone. When was that? Oh, it was about three weeks ago. I moved in. Like the, and uh, it was just this thing that happened. I, I was, I moved in with this chick and um. Chick? You moved in with a chick? Yeah, for about a week. What happened to Jennifer? Uh, she was just running around. She went around? Ru she was running around. Running around? Yeah. No. You don't want to talk about this because you haven't talked to her yet. No, no, I, I just, I told her she, you know, she really wants to talk to you. Oh, good, I'm so glad because, you know, I really like her. And speaking of Jennifer, I guess I better ask this question. Hold on, I better cross off these questions as I go because I'm not in a good state, Neil. Neil, you know, I have a 164 IQ. I'm, I'm almost able to deal with you normally, but intoxicated, I can't deal with you in the least because... I feel that it has lowered my IQ to about 96. <laughs> okay. But um, but I I've been waiting for you since 2:30, yeah. and that's why I've reached this point. Okay, so here's my point. As a born again, no, this isn't my point. This is just one of my questions, which I feel I have the right, I, I which I feel has led into the point where I should ask it now. As a born again feminist, it appears to me that in the Royal Turks interview in Banana Fish, you badgered Jennifer into submission. Oh, uh, I never saw that. You never saw that? Why not? Didn't he send it to you? No. He didn't send it to you? Hey, I think he was just like that. Wait. Um, they see that I have a rule we can't talk for more than 10 minutes on these phones. No! Oh, but listen, I'll give you another number. You call me right back. Okay. Okay, you got a pen? I, I have it right in my hand. Okay, 528. Okay. 9660, six, same area code. 9660? Six, six, yeah. Is that right? Is that a paper? That is right. 528 five, 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 Okay, and that is area code 703? Yeah. I shall call you back right away, Neil. Well, here, here's another number just in case that's wrong. Okay. 558. Okay. 5557. Five, five, okay, I can't wait to talk to you again. Okay, I'll, I'll just run down there real quick. Bye. Bye-bye.
Hey, Neil. Okay, so, I got permission from my counselor. To talk for more than 10 minutes? Yeah, I guess she gave me an hour. So. Oh, wow. So, tell me, why did you get in there in the first place? Well, uh... Neil, I'm so happy to talk to you. Yeah. Neil, I really like you, and let me tell you, I like your music so much. That is why I have been drinking all day. Because normally, I think I kind of make fun of everything, but I just respect you so much. And I just really, I've been so nervous ever since last night when I talked to you, and that's why. Oh, my God, I should shut up. Okay, go on, please. Okay, well, um, Jennifer. Wait, wait, tell me why you got in the hospital. I uh, Jennifer lost her job. Uh huh. And, but was uh, that was that go go dancing? What? Was that go go dancing? Yeah. Why did she lose it? So let her tell you. Okay. Fine. Because uh, you know, uh, because she was basically supporting me, you know. Oh. Uh, oh. Which I mean was basically. Were you two living together? Uh no, it's just I'm I was staying with that chick. You were staying with another chick besides Jennifer? I ain't got to eat. Well, why couldn't you stay with Jennifer? I couldn't find her. Please excuse me if I'm too forward. I'm just very curious. No, no, it's definitely, you know, important, man, because, uh, you know, we knew, you know, we've been together a long time. And it's like How long, if you don't mind my asking? Eight years in March. Eight years? I know. <laughs> Oh my God, I haven't even known anyone that long. I know. Except for my mother. <laughs> before, it's, 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 I, it was the first person I've done for any length of time. Why were you with another person? Uh, I don't know, I, I, well, um, she, well, Jennifer went into detox. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're in right now? No, I'm in, I'm in a rehab facility. You know? What's the difference between detox and rehab? The, well, you did right. Right? It's the amount of medicine they give you. Do they give you more in detox or rehab? Yeah, like when I was in detox last week. They give you more Valium, medicine? You know. They give you Valium? What are you on right now? I don't know. I, I don't know. They just gave me Anaprox, man. And maybe I, I didn't eat dinner, so maybe it has something to do with that. Neil, you sound really different than you did last night. I was very up. I think I maybe had a lot of coffee or something. Yeah, you were really up last night. Would you like a cup of coffee right now? No, just, no. Maybe I, I'm also speaking in a measured voice, because I, I really want to be careful about what I say. Because why? Um, well, I re did you read the voice thing? No, I don't get the village voice. Uh, did you didn't read the, the road truck thing? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I would have if I saw it. See, I don't know why. I mean, I always, like... You know, the voice is just one of those things, like Karl Marx or... You sounded like Karl Marx? No, it's just one of those things. Like, to me, like, um... Like, um... The, uh, the Don't Tread on Me flag. I mean, I remember from, you know, my... What about that years. flag? I know that flag. You know, the, the snake is all chunky. Yeah, I know. When I was a kid, I wanted to go live on an island and just have some people that I like plus that flag. I don't know why, but yeah. it, what about it? And, and then maybe have the voice writers come in there and, you know, we could all rap, too, on that island. I, I just thought that was the coolest thing, you know. I don't understand. You wanted to go on an island and have the village voice? Staff from 1970. Come, come with you on the island? And plus that flag. Right. Are you hung up on the 1970s, Neil? No. No, I'm really not, but... What, what's the Brian Jones fixation? I don't have that, any Brian Jones fixation. Well, uh, I saw you I saw you in sour milk or black milk or whatever it was. Oh, with, yeah. With, with your picture, you cut your face out and you stuck it on this weird Brian Jones collage and, and you said that. your name was Neil Jones. They did the collage. They did that? Yeah, I, I used to call myself Neil Jones. Why did you do that? Because John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. Oh, is that some crazy woman I heard in the background? Yeah, no, that's Phil. What, what's he doing? He's watching the Saints and the Falcons play. Is he pretty excited about it? Yeah, he's a great guy. Oh. He actually remembers seeing me from New York. <laughs> that's funny, you went into the hospital for detox. No, 
met a pal. And then you saw somebody who had seen you play on stage. No, seen me cop dope. Oh. Oh. Seen you what? Cop dope. Talk dope? Cop. Pop. Cop. As a pig. Cop. Oh, cop. there's a policeman in there. No, pure, pure drugs. Pure drugs. Oh, you saw, uh, cop drugs. Yeah, okay. we used to go down the same place. Oh, I see. So. You never seeing me. Oh, I see. It's cool. How old are you? Am I? Yeah. 26. Oh, that's very young. Yeah. Yeah. Axel you've... Rose, 29. Who is? Axel Rose. You've done quite a lot for a 26-year-old man. Thanks. What's What's going to happen with the half-completed Royal Trucks 3 album? Yeah, we got a lot of stuff done. You know, for like a week, I thought I was never going to see Jennifer again. It was like... Because I was, I was, see, I, I, I detoxed briefly. I was shooting a lot of coke. That's, you can get a heart attack from that, Neil. I uh, know, but I have a strong constitution. Me too. Yeah, you know, and it's like, but I, I'm pretty much, you know, that's what I'm trying to stop, really. It's like, that. The coke? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, drinking. Alcohol? You have a problem with alcohol? Oh, I've had, I've been drinking since I was like, shit, 10 years old. This is terrible though, Neil. I mean... Now, what are you? Me? Kind of carry mm -hmm. nation or something like that. Carry nation? Yeah, for the, um, I, You know, that is so funny, Neil. I was watching that and I called you right after I was watching that. Read it, her, her story? Yes, isn't that amazing? You know, you gotta, you gotta see the Bill Wilson story with uh, J James Garner. He's I've, guy, I've never seen that. He's the guy that started AA. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with alcohol. I was, I've just been drinking since early this morning, and now it is, um, it is 7.14 at night. I've been drinking since early this morning because I was so excited to talk to you. That's yeah, why. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Oh, that's wonderful. But, you know, we're really it's having rash. a... At last, at long last. But we're really having a stupid conversation because I am drunk. I've had about seven beers in a row, and you are on downers. I think that's such a drag because I had so much fun talking to you last night, even though it was only for about 30 seconds. I wrote a huge introduction to my interview just after talking to you because it was so exciting. Can I send you something? To, write, to put in your magazine. Oh, I would be so happy if you would. Good, I'm working on a story for a magazine. Oh, good, send it to me. I have I have a 2,000 distribution, so that means if there's four people for every magazine, that means there's 8,000 people that would read it. All right. I know. Great. Okay, let me ask you my next question. Oh, wait, let me ask, so since you moved to New York... I'm in New Hampshire right now. I oh, moved back are? from New York, yeah. So what, you left? Yeah. Oh, well, that destroys that question. Why? What was your question? I was just wondering if your, I don't know if your attitude changed. It did. It sucked. I was like, I went totally crazy in New York. That's why I had to leave. I was, I really had this strong murder impulse in yeah. New York. And I had to leave because I was afraid I was really going to kill somebody. Mm. And I went back to New Hampshire and I totally got cured. That's wild. By yourself? No, I, I was with my boyfriend, um, the both times, who totally gets compared to Royal Trucks, and it's really embarrassing. Um, well, tell them to fuck off. I know, that's what I do. <laughs> but, um, and he was with me in New York, and I was afraid I was going to kill him, and I didn't. And we came back to New Hampshire, and now I'm totally cured. And so I think you should move to New Hampshire or... or can you put us up for a little while? Oh, yes. We have a big apartment, and you are very welcome here. I need somewhere to go when I get out of here. Oh, why don't you come here? Okay. We both like you. <laughs> really? Are you serious? I will. Oh, I'm serious. You're very welcome here. I'm we here. have a big place. We have a little mat that you could sleep on. Cool. And, um... Well, I'll stay out. Of, you know, I like to stay out of the house. Yeah, it's really quiet here, and um, it's not very exciting, but we have, like, three friends that are really nice, that are really weird, and 
So, you know, it's not bad. I mean, it's not New York or San Francisco or anything. Is there any dope around? No, there's nothing. It's really boring here. I have about 50 hits of acid, but that's it. True. I can't even take acid anymore. How come? I don't know. It just gives me... It doesn't work anymore. I really haven't gotten off on acid. Yeah. Really? You just stay normal? Yeah. Like, oh, I get like... It's a little physical sensation, but that's it. Huh, oh, that's weird. It's probably just the speed in it. No, it's supposed to be the speed. Oh, I was out in San Francisco. It's supposed to be this great, grateful dead acid. Hmm. Does it make you laugh a lot? It didn't do nothing for me. Well, anyway, I'm serious that, that um, I mean, of course, you're welcome here. It's really totally not exciting, but um, you're welcome here, and we just got a TV and a VCR for Christmas, so. <laughs> um. <laughs> you can watch movies. Well, you know, I re I'm serious. You know, uh, you know, Aerosmith's from New Hampshire. I didn't, yeah, you know what? You want to know something really funny, Neil? Yeah. Is my mother worked in a private school as a teacher, and she taught the singer, I forget his name, but she, she yes, she taught him in her French class, and he was really shy and nice and everything. That's great. Yeah. Let me ask you my next question. Um, what did you ever say was going to happen with the half-completed Royal Trucks 3 album? I think you said you thought for a while that you weren't going to talk to um, Jennifer, and then it ended. You yeah, and then, then we ran into each other. Was, I was walking with this other chick. Okay. Was this your, your new girlfriend? Yeah, it was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an adaptive person. But, <laughs> you know, but I, I, I sort of pictured it with, like, Jennifer and I would, like, work together again. So you thought you would have a working relationship yeah. and, and not a romantic one. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, because we uh, got, like, yeah, like I badgered her on that interview, things, things like that. It just, but I thought you said you never saw that interview. Well, you told me. I'll, I'll trust you. It's true. You badgered her into submission, and, and I, was, I was upset about it, Neil. Yeah. I was. If I have seen that, I mean, I know, because it's like, I mean, we have, we're like, you know, it's, we're all, it's like when we're together, we're always working. You know what I'm saying? When you're together, you're always working? Yeah. You mean you never have time for fun? Yeah, it's like, you know, she just, then, uh, you know, it just, it's like things like that will happen, and I guess he was, he was just over there, maybe the dope wasn't that good that day or something, you know. Because, I mean... Do you take heroin every day? I mean, when you're not in the hospital? No, I used to. Hmm. When you were in San Francisco? Yeah, every day for about two years. Where did you get the money for all this? Oh, different places. Hmm. I'd rather not. Statute of limitations is not Statutory limitations? Does that mean under 18? Statute of limitations. What does that mean? Well, certain crimes have, like, you know, they can't prosecute you after, like, say, a year. Mm. So you just want to larceny anything. Larceny? What's that mean? Theft. Oh, well, you were stealing things. Neil, you were stealing things? Yeah. You wild man. Yeah, it's called the B and E. You better not come over here and steal my TV, because I got it for Christmas. I never steal from friends. Okay, good. Yeah. Have you answered a single one of my questions yet? I, I can't understand, because I'm well, going to talk to you. you asked me if I was hung up on the 70s. I'd like to talk about that. Go right ahead. Okay. Well, you know, like, in fact, when I left San Francisco, a club opened up called 1970s. I didn't know that. And then there was Primus. Uh, jellyfish is a uh, nine-inch nail. Get big out there. It's sort of like uh, I don't know. Everyone they film the Doors movie. Did you ever see that movie? No. It brought, and they filmed the Doors movie and they recreated '67, which. things 
just hug me. People weren't smart. People weren't smart. They, they weren't smart, you know, and, and, and you know what I'm saying, like, you know, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Glittery? Glittery? Yeah. No, I mean, I, uh, I don't know, I look at, um, these bands like uh, Nirvana. What about them? Soundgarden. Those people are drinking all the time. In their 70s bands. Yes, but they... they but there's nothing to it. To they them. should calm down on their drinking and, and, just, and just take more uppers. You think so? I really think so. I, I feel strongly that. I don't know. I feel, I feel that there's too much drinking going on. Oh, I'm with you on that completely. I, I tend never to... I, down on drinking. Well, just, no, because it's just, because there's nothing else to do, kind of thing. What, what are you saying, that it's boring? Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, it's boring. Hold on, let me, make okay, it. go on, it's recording. <laughs> yeah, it's boring. I mean, I don't know, it's, this is, these are just, this is just a conversation. Have you, have you answered any of my questions? I, I'm not in a state to understand if you have answered any of my questions or not. What is going to happen with that? Half the money. that one, yeah. Well, we need more money. Why do you need more money? We need to record some more. I thought it was mostly recorded and you just needed to do some overdubs or something. Yeah, that's all we need. We need about 200 bucks. Oh, and they won't, and uh, Matador won't give you $200? Well, that's a, that's something else altogether. I mean, we we just got like tons of stuff to get. We we can like, like put together some records and then go on tour. What's all that noise in the background? I'm in the smoking lounge. <laughs> Is everyone getting really wild on their cigarette yeah, nicotine? Yeah, the and the Falcons. <laughs> Okay, speaking of incongruous ideas, um, I heard uh, from one person that your album was never recorded. I heard from another person that it only needed some overdubs. I heard from one person that uh, Twin Infinitives was recorded uh, completely straight. I mean, it just went straight through. You just recorded it. And then I heard from another person which was actually you, this was this other person, yeah. that it was recorded, you said it was like a big bang, that it was just one big thing, and then you went over and over and over and over and over the small parts that you cut up. So, yeah. what's true? Um, it's all true, really, to very degrees. Okay. Seriously, I mean, I can't. It's like, like, okay, the situation with Matador is... They breached the contract. I mean, it's almost like it was sort of ridiculous, you know, I signed a contract. The whole thing, you know, it's like... How did they breach the contract? Well, well we sent that, they sent a standard, their standard contract. You know, right. I got one of them, actually, and I never got a record out of it, but... Really? Yeah, I got the contract, and I signed the contract, and nothing ever happened. I sent them the tapes, and nothing ever happened. Really? Yeah. See, well, it's exactly what I don't want to have happen. Us. And so they've had the t they've had the tapes for about a year. Tapes are in San Francisco with this fucking weasel named Gray, who uh, was the dude. He engineered Twin Infinities, you know. I mean, he, he pushed the stop and stop button mm -hmm. on the tape recorder, and you know, no, he was he was okay. But then I guess we didn't make a lot of friends in San Francisco or whatever. Like we played one gig in San Francisco. <laughs> he had, like uh, two weeks before we had to leave the city because things were, you know, falling apart and closing in on us and stuff. 
<laughs> and you were yelling about money. In, in the interview? No. Uh, I read an interview with Thinking Fellows Union, and they were complaining about how you were yelling about money. Oh, yeah, that was a... God, that was so funny, man. I was just like, I hadn't been in a fight in, like, years. The guy did you punch like, anybody out, Neil? No, you know what? I, I did... Okay, well, they... I, you know, I, I, I swung. You swung? Uh-huh. And he hit my hand away and hit Jennifer in the head. <laughs> I know, man. She got like hit right in the nose, and then. Like, <laughs> All of those kind of fights. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, they have to be. It's just like. Who did you swing at? Oh, the guy. Oh, the, he was, I don't know which band he was in. <laughs> was thinking fellas. Oh, that is so funny. I love fights where you swing at one person, and you end up hitting your girlfriend in the nose. That is just the. That's just the greatest fight you can possibly have. I know. She dove in. You know, she was trying to stop the fight too. <laughs> Like, you idiot, you know, if you hadn't done that, we would have gotten a hundred bucks. It was just ridiculous because we, we had, like, kept calling, and the person that we were talking to wasn't telling anybody that we were going to be late. So, we, you know, we got sabotaged, right? All right. And so then it was just like, I just made, you know, it was like, well, the show is going to be, you know, <laughs> that, that's going to show, you know, it's all I get about it because... I don't know, this band, they covered that song, she, you know, I Want Her, She's So Heavy by the Beatles. Yeah. Things like that. What, what, what does that have to do with the money that you should receive? The show was lame. It was so so you thought that because they made lame music, you should have gotten more money because you make good oh, music? Oh, no, I didn't think we should have gotten more money, really. I really didn't. We had plenty of money. Seriously. We had our own money. We so you just thought that they shouldn't get all the money? No, I, no, I just wanted to just... Throw some shit. So you just wanted to have fun. Yeah, precisely. And they tell. Oh, that's that's a good idea. We really, true, truthfully, man, I'll tell you, because we had money. We were getting, we had like plenty of drug money. Oh, I'm really happy. I'm really happy to hear that. I I think that's really funny. Yeah. See, and I think like Mandor has this idea that you know the way they run their thing is like they think two thousand dollars is really enough to record a record. It's not. Honestly, man, I mean, if you think about, you know, you think of it as, like, product, man, and, you, you know, and there's certain minds that, you know, you'd like, you want them to have a voice, you know, it's all very political, right? But it's like, you know, some people will just take 2,000 and go, yeah, you know, we're going to get a record out, and, uh, you know, I think Gerard thinks that, like, we should have been, ha you know, we should be happy with that kind of situation. So what are you saying? That they gave you $2,000, but that wasn't enough? Right. And you want more? You want $200 more? Yeah. And they won't give you $200 more? Um, I called them up one night, really fucked up, and I, get, I left this 45-minute phone message <laughs> talking about everything, you know, invoking, I mean... Really, just uh, I mean, it was just a bunch of like things, you know, just some ideas I had in my mind. I was like, well, I won't go, you know, work them out. I'll, I'll just call them up and see what happens. And he sent me this letter, and just basically, you know, you're asking for money. Was like, you're asking for money that we just don't have or something, you know. You know, it's like, I don't give a shit if, if anyone else hears my record, you know. I you mean, don't? You don't care if anyone hears your record or not? No, I mean, not in the sense that I want to, you know, it's like I want to pretend to be in the music business. Well, I care because I want to hear your record and I have no way of hearing your record if it doesn't come out. No, but it'll, things will be coming out. How will it be coming out, though, if they never put it out? Well, they have. Well, for example, did you ever hear the, the track they put on the sample that they put out? No, they never sent that to me because I don't give them good reviews. They said, okay, for example, yeah, I have just about that. I said something about that. And they said, uh, well, we sent it to you, but it got returned because the address he gave us was invalid or something. Okay, this leads into my next question. Yeah. Okay, um, how, what's the longest you've ever stayed in one place? You mean in one apartment or one city? One apartment. That would be, uh, we lived on 11th Street. In what city? In New York City. 
for, oh no, I guess actually it was in San Francisco, yeah, we had the same apartment all the time, we were there about a year, uh, One year, 12 months? Yeah. Okay. So far, 14 months. Okay, so I guess I would say that you're a nomad since most people stay at least a couple years in one place. Definitely. So, so do you, does the constant upheaval in your life mm -hmm. have an effect on your music? Do new places give you ideas? Does being a nomad keep your mind from settling down and, you know, keep yeah. you changing and does that affect your music? Totally, man. That's the whole point. One of the points, I guess. Or that's the whole point of that part of the point, you know? That's why you move all the time. I hate, yeah, I just don't want to get, I don't want to get trapped in anything. And that's why heroin yeah, is such a funny thing, you know? That's why what's such a funny, heroin? Heroin yeah, is because... You know, it's like the whole slave thing, you know? I mean, really, I told people, I've told people that, like, when we were in San Francisco, we couldn't even go to Oakland, which is, like, across the bridge. I know where Oakland is. I live there. I'm sorry. It's okay. But, I mean, too, straight, you know, the distance, and, like, you know, we couldn't make it there without, you know, bringing, like, a gland of dope with us, because, you know... We were that strung out, and that makes you a slave, and all this other shit. Do you think that's a good thing, or...? or? No, I, no, I don't know. I just think that that's just something, you know, it's part of life, I mean. How did, you get life. The, how did you get in that position to begin with? Oh, well, when, you know, I'll tell you, man, when I was, I think I was like 13, I went to see Queen after News of the World came out. Uh-huh. And a friend of mine, well, I lived in Europe, and my, because my dad was in the army, right? And a friend of mine's older brother was our chaperone, you know, and he brought cut some coke, some heroin, uh -huh. Jack Daniels, uh -huh. hash, uh -huh. acid. All together? Yeah, man, it was a great concert. And you were 13 years old? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I know. So I lucked out, you know. Where did it really start? And that's where it started, and from then on, you just thought it was great. Yeah. Aren't you afraid that pleasure is going to mess up your art? No. Because, like you said, you know, move around. Living, I mean, living is pain. You, do you think life is pain? Hmm? Life is pain? Yeah. And, and what does that have to do with your music? Everything. Is your music an antidote, or is mm -hmm. it just a reflection, or...? I think a lot of my music is sort of like a bulldozer, you know? It bulldozes your life, so... Uh, yeah. Other people, really. I mean, it's, to me, you know, it's communication. It's really where I put everything, you know? I put everything in it that I... Is it the most important thing in your life? Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Um, okay, uh, how... I would die, you know, I'd go if, you know, like, that's what we used to do the shows in this, the canteen, you know? I don't know if you saw any of those TV shows. I've never seen any of your shows. I don't, I never get out. We just basically showed up, got as drunk as we could, to try to pick fights with people, you know. Have you been in a lot of fights, Neil? No. Do you like getting in fights? No. You don't? No. I, mean, I do. I, I, mean, I think I it's exciting. Think, you know, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, there's many, like, there's, you know, there's a, there's a thinking, okay, about that. When you ask me that question, I say, no, right now. Wait, wait, what, what are you saying? Are you saying that right no, now you would say no, but right now, other times you would say yes? But it could happen, you know, I mean... I like fights. I think they're exciting. That's why there's boxing. You see, there's... But I don't like boxing because that's too controlled. Mm -hmm. I don't like boxing because it's too controlled. Right. You see what I'm saying, then? You, you, you know, that's what I'm talking about. There's just about everything that is life. People deal with pain by, like, dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? And explaining it. <laughs> Um, Instead of going the other way, and that's what I'm trying to say, you know. If I had had one extra cup of coffee instead of one extra beer, I think I would understand what you're saying. 
But I think perhaps when I listen to these tapes later, I will understand. So just explain away, and, and later I will understand when I am in a different frame of mind. And I will just go ahead and ask my questions that I wrote out before, and and then um, hopefully I will be able to decipher them later. Okay. Um, I know I there's two forces at work here. We have a man and a woman here. Okay. And then yes. As far as, that, as far as biological entrapment, we've got that. I mean, you know, and... Well, why is it biological entrapment? You see, what I feel, Neil, is that there is a man and woman in every brain, and normally Definitely. in the... In the female, the, the feminine part comes out, and normally in the male, the male part comes out. But I feel that the male part in mine is much stronger because I'm a much more analytical part, uh, I'm much more analytical than I am receptive and caring. So I feel that I am more male than female, so I feel that I can really relate to you. So it's intellectual, and oh. that's, but that's, you know what I'm saying? That's, to me, that's on the level of, like, horoscopes because I think that there's, a, there's something outside you feel that you feel that intellectuality is on the same level as horoscopes? No, like what you said, like any kind of um, a rationality. Right. It's something like you know walking a tightrope. Hmm. You know. Hmm. And like that's well, you said it would make perfect. You know, it's perfect sense, and that's that's like a dialectic that we could take up and we could agree on. What I, is? I could just. You know, of course, through will, I could say, you know, do or believe anything I want to. And there, and there is no answers. There's no, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, see, in the 70s, I think people, they didn't, they weren't looking forward. It was like very much of the moment, you know, was happening. You're saying that in the 70s it was a now thing instead of a trying to understand what was going on? Yeah, whereas in the 80s it was a very much, uh, you know, a future. It's like, like, you know, the concept of this works, that works. In the 80s it was building towards the future, but in the 70s it was experiencing the now. Something like that, yeah. What does that have to do with the male-female problem? Well, it just say about anything. I mean, you know, like... 70s, um, it's like uh, the Fear of Flying, book by Erica John. Right, I read that. Something about that. You could refer, that's something that's like a masculine approach to feminine sexuality. You know what I'm saying? I didn't feel that that was very masculine. I felt that that was very feminine myself. I feel. In the sense of the aggressiveness. I felt that the guilt was very feminine. I didn't feel that the aggressiveness, I think aggressiveness could be both masculine and feminine, but I felt that the guilt was was uh, feminine, and I feel that I have no guilt, and that's why I'm masculine. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, but then again, I don't know, because uh, I only speak English, too, which is another problem. Yes, I feel, I feel, and I know French, and I feel that knowing French has really made me very universal. <laughs> Either that or I'm drunk, one of the two. <laughs> uh, Paris, man. What about Paris? I go there sometimes soon. It's nothing special, believe me. You should, you know where you should go, Neil? I've been there. Oh, you have? I have, but I just, for some reason. It sucks. It's uh, boring. You should go to Belgium. Belgium is where the... That's where I lived in, when I lived in Europe. You lived in Belgium? Brussels, just outside of Brussels. Wow! Oh, that's great. Wow, that is a great place, isn't it? Did you yeah. go to the bars there? Yeah. Aren't those people crazy? Yeah, it's fucking great. God, those people are insane. Those people are like characters in a book. I couldn't believe it. Everyone was smashing glasses and biting me and, and doing all kinds of crazy things. I was... Did I really wanted... Tour Europe? Yes, tons of times. Because, oh. you know, I lived in France, you know, a couple of years, and oh. and uh, and so we toured Europe lots of times, and boy, Belgium just blew me away. Those people just so impressed me. I just felt like... So, so you up for like a tour, suck dog, roll truck tour of Europe? Oh, yes. That would be lovely. I, I would very much up. enjoy that. Could you set it up? 
Oh, could I set it up? Yeah, because my husband lives in Paris, so... Uh, or actually, he was right outside of Paris now, so... Oh, dude, I'm serious about this now. I'm serious, too. Say, like, in uh, March? Like, March? Like, uh, okay. I'll truck up there in New Hampshire, and then we'll go. What's this, December, March, January, February, March? Yeah, I could do that. Because oh, I know we were getting a lot of good responses from France. Uh-huh. And yeah, I know. We we always get, like, 200 people, so that would be good. Um, I'm serious. I, well, I'm serious. I'm a very serious woman. March. Okay, let me. Let me write this down. March. Yeah. Would you like to tour Japan, Neil? Yeah. I would love to tour Japan. Actually, I've been thinking. Oh no, wait. You know what? I'm going to start college in January. So. Um, yeah. How would you like to tour Europe and then um, Japan in June? Yeah. Is that okay? So, I, like when I get out of here, yes. I get out of here in uh, two weeks. Yes. I'm, I'm going. I'm leaving this area. Well, come up here. I'm serious. We would love to have you. I, oh. you, I can stay there till June. Yeah, although you might be bored, but... I don't know. I, see, this is something... I stay home, you know. I don't work, so... I don't get bored. Okay, good. I don't. I never get bored myself. Okay, I'm up there, man. Okay, well, you're welcome up here. I shall give you my address and everything. There. Okay, and maybe Jennifer, too. Okay, that would be lovely. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can stay there maybe for just a, you know, we maybe find our own place. Okay, or, well, we have, um, we have a big apartment and we have an attic and everything, so, you know, there's plenty of room. Lisa, this is going to be great. Okay, good. Oh, I'm so pleased. Well, maybe we'll do some tunes together. Maybe we'll work on an opera together. Oh, that would be so lovely. I got some good ideas. Oh, good. Okay, so let me finish asking my questions just in case your hour runs out. No, you keep going. Okay. I've got 25 minutes. Oh, good. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so wait, let me look at my clock. See, the thing, okay, let me tell you something. Like, the last time, when I was in Pussy Galore, right, that was, I, there was like some structure to my life. Why? Because John ran things? Well, yeah, because it was, being, it, it was being run as a band. It was just to make, you know, I don't, you know, whatever. I mean, yeah, when I think about that, it's just, I, I don't even know what the fuck, you know. It was like... What are you saying, Neil? Yeah. in D.C., you know, and like, um, they took me out. I got, I got a chance to go to New York, you know, and, um, you know, I sponged off them and shit for a while. Why do you say sponge off them? W I weren't you getting paid? Eventually, but they had like some savings, you know. Mhm. Mm Wasn't that woman really rich? I forget her name. Julie. Yeah. No. Oh, I thought she was She's rich. She's really cool, though, man. She's studying acting now. Mm. I don't know. I, I I really like her. Do you have any? Um, but I see, that was like the last time. After that, it was real trucks, and it was they got like a chance to. I wanted. To, like, I thought I needed a little discipline, you know. So that's why, like, uh, I go, okay, I'll go with this band for a while. And then, you know, I, kept, I quit a couple times. What, Pussy Galore? Yeah, because I didn't want to really get, you know, would hate to be, like, successful. You know, I, didn't, I was really scared of like, getting, being successful with that band. And then, you know, you know, it's bad enough already with you know, the, the attachment that I had grown. You were afraid of being too dependent on John? No, no, not, no, I mean, in, in, you know, in like, um, you know, it's going, oh, I mean, it's hard to like, oh, the former guitar player from Pussy Galore, you know. You were afraid of having the, the, the yeah. badge of being a former member of Pussy Galore. Yeah, and then having to be like, you know, peaking it on a certain amount of success, and then going down or something, you know, and then that would, that would have been it, you know. Mm. Well, I, I personally think that, that Royal Trucks is more important than Pussy Galore, although I really loved Pussy Galore, too, but, um... I really, I don't know, I just don't, to me, it's something, it's like, if it was like high school or something, you know what I mean? Like, just something you had to do, and then, you know, and it, and then, it was sort of like, too, it was cool, because, like, I could do that, get a taste of it, of, you know, like, touring and stuff like that, and then, like, Jennifer was going to school, so you looked at it as a stepping stone? Yeah, to nowhere, you know. Well, just a, <laughs> a little bit of discipline, something like that. You know, I don't know what I... I didn't really think 
think about that much. Um. But I mean, there's, to me, there's no. I mean, there's really nothing personal about it. I like to really a lot, you know. I and I, I, I really liked her instantly, and then she was real kind to me. I don't know. If she was. Who is she? Julie. Oh, okay. The other. I know who Julie. The other is. one is the other one in black. <laughs> you know, and it was cool. Like, <laughs> it was, whoa, we met Steve and Mary Chain. You know, because they were like, you know, this band would, so funny, this band would come out. People I knew would, like, be like, oh, these guys are great. You know, and then, like, I'd go meet them or something, you know. It was, I got to, it was like a lesson in demystification, you know. Why, because you found out that they were actually losers? No, not that I did. It was just I got to see both sides of it, you know. You mean you got to saw the dull side? I, well, no, I mean, I saw, the, you know, I, I was there with the band. Then I was down there with the fans. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I mean? Like, you know, some people are just, you know. Just, Surely not you got to see that they're just humans. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, this is way, I'm way beyond that, let's say. Oh, good. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to make that right? I have no idea what you mean. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, let me, let me put it this way. Okay, I'm ready. I didn't want to start doing anything with road trucks until I thought, you know, I, I knew there was a lot of questions that I had about, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to start something and then, like, get fucked up over it. You know, get trapped into something. You, know? you wanted to be a wise old man. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I was, and then now. But you're only 26. Right. Hmm. Looks up pretty good. And I don't, you know. I a lot play. of blues men are, are about 70. Oh, uh, yeah. I know, my aunt. Um, it's a bitch. <laughs> How many times have you played live as Royal Trucks? Live. Approximately. Approximately. I'd say about 30, 30 times, maybe. We played a lot at the canteen, CBGB's canteen. Is somebody playing a video game in the background? No, that's, they're watching uh, Jeopardy now. Oh, God. The game's over. <laughs> Are um, you... S <laughs> right now, I'm, uh, I'm, I've got, I'm reading, um, instead of watching TV, I'm saying, I'm reading this guy, Martin Amos, have you heard of him? I think I've heard of him, didn't he, excuse me, but, if I'm wrong, but didn't he write for a maximum rock and roll? No. Oh, that was Martin Sprouse, I'm sorry, he's shoot a, me. He's this British author, he wrote, wrote this book, just came out called Time's Arrow, it's, a, it's like, this guy, it's written by this, the narrator, it's like this doppelganger, who's inside this guy who starts off in a, as a little as a doctor and, uh, in America and it's, the whole thing is like everything it's just like backwards you know life going backwards and it turns out that this guy's actually he was at Auschwitz and it follows him from the writer you know it's, it's really cool it's a very funny book it's like about you know like a funeral in reverse you know described by you know, the, the man's second soul. And uh, sometimes, only once in the book does the actual person in the book, the character that the book's about, actually speak in the first person because the soul feels that it, things are starting to make sense. What did you say, the soul field? The, the soul field, the, the doppelganger. The Spell that. Of this guy. S Spell that, please. Doppelganger? No, soul gil. Oh, this soul feels. The soul is doppelganger who's inside this man. Oh, so doppelganger's soul is inside this man. Isn't doppelganger some SS guy? What? Isn't doppelganger some SS guy? What's that? Uh, um, you know, the Nazis. The no, no, it's a German myth, like Banshee or, uh, uh, you know, like a ghost. Uh-huh. It's that, like, under certain conditions of stress, this, the doppelganger is like your double. And he splits off and he does all the evil that men, you know, men. And this is German? This is a German myth? Yeah. Kind of like Thor. Mm. Loki. Uh-huh. The Ryan. Mm. The Black Forest. Do you, like, 
like Dostoevsky? Dostoevsky? Yes. Uh, no. You don't? No. Why not? I don't know. Oh, I'm shocked. I can't believe it. I like Sartre and... And you don't like Dostoevsky? No. I don't, I don't think there's a single Russian writer that I like. Really? <gasps> You're not even Stanislav Lem. Why not? I don't know. That is shocking to me. You know, I mean, I like this guy, Martin Amis. He's like the latest writer I found that I like. Is he German? No, he's British. He's British. Uh, and I like Burroughs, of course. He's kind of sexy, don't you think? Yeah. I like the way he looks. Now that you know, man, I'm so psyched. The Naked Lunch is coming out. Yeah, I, I know. Let's see that together when I get up there. Okay, I don't know if it's going to come here. Actually, Neil, we might have to go to Boston to see it. <laughs> Nothing ever comes here. <laughs> let, me, let me finish my question. So, are you satisfied with this mode of musical communication, which is playing live? I mean, do you feel that you are saying what you want to say and that people perceive it as that? No, we haven't even tried to do it yet, really. So you've played 30 times, but you haven't tried to say what you want to say? No. Well, well what have you been saying all those 30 times? That, that we were playing at this point doesn't mean a damn thing, and that, like, the audience better not <laughs> think, you know, they better get off their butts, you know. And do I what mean, once they get off their butts? What? What should they do once they get off their butts? Uh, I don't know. Demand more? <laughs> Jennifer, in the meantime? Yeah. What's your phone number? Okay. It's uh, area code 202. Okay. 544. Okay. 0373. And you want me to call you back at 830? No. When? Uh, meeting won't be over till 9, so make it 930. 930. And where should I call you? At 558-6289? Five, five, yeah, this one. Oh, Okay. Well, where I'm calling you right now is 528-9660. Okay, that, yeah, call me that. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Did you talk to Jennifer? No, I couldn't. She wasn't home. Beast? Uh, sorry, sleep, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I'll call her tomorrow. How'd your meeting go? Uh, fucking boring. <laughs> uh, I went to some AA meetings a couple of years ago. It was the most boring thing the most stupid thing I've ever been to in my life. It made me want to be an alcoholic just so I wouldn't be so boring. Right. <laughs> um, what are your uh, fellow inmates like? Are there any good characters there? Yeah, I got Phil here, man. That's the one that uh, you met before. Well, I never really met him. He just, we just uh, knew that we recognized each other. He's cool. What are, what are his interesting characteristics? That's me how my fellow inmates. Uh -oh. There's any cool people there. Yeah. Letty. Was that one of your inmates or a nurse? She's that one of the inmates. Does she think she's cool? They're all cool. Well, most of them. <laughs> they all like, I don't know. Well, I'm glad that you had your, your meeting because it gave me a chance to sober up. And I went back and I listened to your interview and I realized that you talk in signifiers, yeah. and it's, um, I noticed that before, but it wasn't in, in other, um, the other interviews I've seen with you, but it wasn't really. It was then. It, it was more signifiers then? No, they were, yeah, they were then as well. Um, and 
Um, can I go back and try to get the basic ideas out of you instead of just what you've worked out? Because what you've worked out in your brain for what everything means is uh, probably not going to um, translate directly to other people's brains. You know what I'm saying? Right, but that's what Rural Trucks is about. It's a conduit from, from central nervous system to central nervous system. You mean from your central nervous system to the public's central nervous system? Well, I guess, unfortunately, that's the situation because, you know, we've taken a position of being a band, shit. But really, I mean... What else would you like to be? Would you like to be a writer or a philosopher or a, a movie maker or what? Well, we've done all... I've, I mean, I've done all these things before. See, it's... Uh, I just... I just never buy... I don't buy anything, you know, I just don't believe in it, you know, you know, it's it, like, okay, it sounds, it, it, it's it sounds, for me. I, no, I like anything, you know, you like anything, but you don't believe in anything, yeah, so, you know what I'm saying, that, does, that, you, does, does that seem contradictory, um, no, not at all, oh, okay. uh, I, I would say that that is exactly my philosophy of life, yeah, but, um, but then again, who knows, but I, I mean, I really like this idea of. I, I'm really impressed that you've worked that you've worked things out so that you have all these signifiers, and I think that is really a sign of of like a really deep thinker. But I also think that nobody's going to get it. I mean, you know, yeah, no. you know, nobody is. I mean, I, I'm sitting here trying to. Well, I'm in this rehab unit. What you think it's too hard on your brain? No, that because I didn't have to make I didn't make any money. Oh, so you think that because you speak in in, in this weird dialect, if, if I don't know if you're going to object to this, but this poetic, I mean, I think it's poetic, because I think signifiers you know, are poetic. Don't talk to poet. Yeah, and I, I, would, I, I think you're very similar to him. Yeah, but it means just the creator. Mm-hmm. So. But, so, yeah, so, you, no. so you think that that's why you didn't get more success? Because you're you're too um, too too sophisticated. Yet. We haven't tried yet. You know, this is another way of thing. Oh, it's so hard. It's <laughs> it's so hard. I'm trying to get you down to basics, but you keep on saying these things that interest me, so I go off. But um, okay, here's another thing that I wanted to say is in. You know, I've only read like. Have you done many interviews? I've read like two interviews with you. Have I done more? Have you done a lot of interviews? I've read about two of them. You want to, well, there was one in Banana Fish, right? Yeah, I read that one. Okay, was that the issue? It just came out. It has blue cover. It just came out? Yeah, I, well, it came out about a month ago. So, okay, so I haven't seen that one. Okay. So that was weird, like, we got a lot of, um, he saw the one, he, he has a list of questions, and we were going to write it out, because the interview we did was just like, we were, like, we were fighting or something. Uh-huh. So, I mean... Like, my intentions were, like, to try to show what could be conceivably the worst side of ourselves. Was this all written out? No, we never see, because, no, because he thought that interview was, well, it was kind of bad. Maybe there's some other questions, you know. I think, actually, I called him up and said, uh, you know, maybe it'll make us look bad or something like that. Uh, so, because I thought I didn't get any ideas in it. So you did a written interview and you didn't like it, so then you went no. back and did a spoken one. No, we did a spoken one first, and then we just never, he gave us, we went through this rig and roll, roll with getting a, some questions on paper, mm -hmm. and then uh, we just never gave it back to him. Because oh. I, I, he was a cool, he, I don't know, he was all right, but I don't know. Um, well, this is the, this is my question. Well, I have tons of questions, but this is one of my questions. Okay. Um, is that it always seems like you're looking forward. It always seems like you're denying everything that you've done in the past. It, it seems like you're always saying that your past records, your past shows, your past ideas were just like jokes and that you're going to do your real thing in the future. Do you think that's ever going to happen or is it always going to be a dream? I mean, is it possible well, to see, do a real thing? Well, that whole paradigm is, is what I'm working against, I think. Or trying to, or like, or like trying to, I mean, a lot of people would say I'm just like, you know, not accepting, you know, I'm not accepting life as, you know, I'm not, I'm not being realistic, like, say it would always be a dream, but... 
I'm not saying that, I'm just asking. No, uh, no. Well, yeah, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, you know, no, I mean, I've lived that my whole life, man. So it's like, I know that, uh, because, I mean, you know, rock and roll. I mean, it's something. Okay, that's another one of my questions. What do you mean by rock and roll? You talked a lot about that in the... What, what does that mean to you? It's just like, it's just like the uh, energy. I mean, can't you, can't you find that in, you know, other... Energy. Can't you find that in, say, you know, country and western, or... I mean... Yeah, sometimes, like, Randy Travis's voice gives me a... Partly. It's like, you know, I mean, that's why it's correlated to drugs, when you really know. When you get, like, you know, you, you get your PDR, and you, you're really in a pharmacology. And What's PDR? It's a physician desk reference. Oh. You got like a good pharmacological connection and you can get, you can get what you want when you want it. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna, you know, mix and match. Mm-hmm. Shoot LSD. And what does this have to do with? Well, it's corollary to that where you need bits. Okay. You know, you're, maybe you're looking for something. Mm-hmm. You know. You're looking for like a certain mood or? Right. Okay. Uh -huh. So in that sense, what we have done isn't a joke because some of it's been there, you know. I and mean, that also has to do with like digitized sampling because it's like you take like Randy Travis's voice and use that as an instrument. Uh-huh. But rock and roll is definitely something. So so what are you saying? Because you use, Historically. are you saying because you use Randy Travis's voice as a, as a sample that makes it a joke? No, no, I mean that, the question was. Are you what? asking me? I, yeah. I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> I don't know, well, I'm saying, okay, like, so you couldn't find, so you could find the energy in country and western music, right? Right. So I'd say, I'll give you an example. Oh, yeah, I can. There's this band called The Seldom Scene, which is, they're actually a local, not local, well, Virginia band, they're pretty big. They're a bluegrass band, but I'm not going to see them that much. I just saw, you know, ever heard of Matthew Sweet? Yes. I just saw him. How was he? Um, that was okay, because Richard Lloyd was playing with him. Mm. Oh, it's like a guitar, and I wanted to see because I've never seen Richard Lloyd play. Okay, um, let me try to get to the bottom of some of your signifiers. All right, you said something, you compare, you said somehow these are all related your measured voice which i assume was so that the nurses wouldn't think you were upset or something right. and you related that to karl marx and the village voice writers right. how does that all relate and the flag yeah oh yeah Talking and about the 70s the don't step on me flag in the 70s how, how are all how do all those come together well the way i see it is that like um there's a certain a certain force operating underneath Everything, and I and I feel that it is underneath everything, or just those particular things. Underneath, underneath social life, and I think I think specifically in America because I've lived in a lot of places in America. Uh huh. But what what does Karl Marx have to do with America? Well, you know, I mean, especially with what's been going on in Eastern Europe. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of people think Marxism is actually you know communism. Right. And it wasn't, you know. What does that have to do with Don't Tread on Me? Well, a lot of people think, you know, that certain signifiers from the 70s capture an essence that, you know, what is Revolution? the 70s. But I, and I think they've missed the point, but it's, it's like it's enough, and then we move on. And so Royal Trucks would ask you to, a Royal Trucks, to me Royal Trucks is like, it's like, like the trip, you know. Like, like the word life. It's like, on oh, one rail trucks. I, I'm not sure I follow you. Um, As a matter of fact, I am sure that I don't follow you. Um, you're asking, okay, you just want me to relate those ideas? I, well, I'm trying to get to the bottom of your idea. I'm trying to get beyond what it means to you to a sort of um, objective. But it's not fair. Uh, to mean well, I'm a journalist, so I'm, you know, so that's what I'm after. It doesn't mean, you know, you have to answer me. It just, it's just, you know, that's what I'm going to be pushing for. I see. 
All right, you want to skip no, that no, one? I, I, I wonder if, like, like, who just died? Uh, <laughs> Lots of people. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? See, immediately, you know, I mean, I, I've always been, you know, a, ce a celebrity watching person. Uh-huh. And I've, I've had, my interest has always been, to, to me, you know, some, some people are good with tools, and they do work, and they have a life. To me, my life has always, you know, it's been sort of like, in the, you know, electronic media. Uh-huh. And uh, acoustic media, too, I guess. Actually, not so much that. Um, so, like you say, I speak in signifiers. And, you know, he says, I want to say, it's like advertising something that I can't quite, that I can't give to you. Not you. Is it something Maybe that you... give it to you. Are you uh, the uh, audience that we can't give. That's something that, like, Marley Crew just can't give. Guns N' Roses can't give. Them, which is themselves. Truly. But if you think of, like, Christ as a central, you know, as a functional principle in American life. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you know another sacrifice myth that's better... You see what I'm saying? Uh, well, I think that the Christ sacrifice myth is pretty good. Right, okay, so okay. So it's good. Now, like... But are you saying that he couldn't give himself, he could only give signifiers? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, ultimately, I think that... So you're saying that it's impossible because he was the best and he couldn't do it, so you're not proposing to do it. Right. But a lot but of people... not absolutely either. But a, lo a lot of people do propose to do it. I mean, a lot of people aren't even aware... I mean, actually, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people aren't aware that they aren't actually communicating, that they're just giving signifiers. Exactly. And so, if I can, if I can maybe attract slightly, get away with a little bit of something, and then throw some shit in there, it's like confusing. Like, we'll take the blows. What, what sort of blows? Bad reviews bad business, mm. you know. Would you like to be successful? Would you like to reach the point of, say, Michael Jackson? I don't even think of those terms. I'd like to make a living. I'd like to make a living doing this because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I may not make a living. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be doing this. I'm not going to ever stop. It's never going to be my hobby, I suppose. So you might as well get some money out of it. <laughs> well, yeah, because I think that, like, I mean... It would be stupid to form some kind of central cult, you know, which is another reason why, I mean, I've always tried to fuck our shares up here and there. Like, look, when we did the CB show like, this year, you know, I, I thought it was a good show. Uh-huh. And a lot of people, you know, thought it was good, but it was just a show. And, you know, it's just one in, in a million. I hope. <laughs> you know, I mean, see, to me, you know, like, I think, my, you know, that's my a totally different thing, you know. I don't think we're really even, we, won't, we wouldn't be in the same business, per se. Here, here's another um, signifier, which I personally am very interested in and would like to get to the bottom of, is um, you said there's a biological entrapment between you and me because you're male and I'm female so what what do you think is the entrapment or the problem or or yeah. the lack of communication I mean what do you think is that well, it's is? just basic you know biology that's it I mean you know there's a lot of songs like lose his skin on Sandinista oh man you know there's so many you know, going out of my head but going off your head there's so many what there's so many things, you know, I mean, it comes down to the same thing, you know. Real central nervous system con con contact. Truly. Huh? <laughs> real biological entrapment standing in the way of, of central nervous system. What does that have to do with... Contact. What, it, central nervous system contact. Telepathy. Does that have anything to do with male and female, though, or is that just because we're two separate people? 
Well, no, it does. Because well, I'm saying, and then that's just created. See, to, to me, that just knocks down about. I mean, it just uh, to me, it takes it takes away about like 60 percent of possible conflicts that are standing in the way of some kind of feeling that I have that life could be better for everybody, or if not for everybody, just for myself. Wait, wait, the fact that I am female takes away 60%? The fact that is if we just realized that and just forgot about any problems that have to do with that and went on, you see what I'm saying? But there's just that reality, there's just that entrapment that's keeping us from getting to the problem of the brain, then the problem of energy. And, and we're, you know, I mean, if you look at what's going on, there, you know, there's like things like business that stands in the way of, 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 you know, commerce or whatever that stands in the way of art. There's like the eternal argument of art versus uh, commerce. They're always dialectics, you know. Are you saying that, that females are, are I mean, um, that the two sexes are eternally in opposition to each other? No, I'm saying that we can just, just like forget the whole thing altogether. Sure. Right. What the heck? <laughs> See, you know what I mean, and let it stand. I mean, I, I've been called on, like, I mean, like, you said, like, I was a badgering Jennifer in that interview, man, you know. Right. And, it, you know. Are you saying that I said that because I'm female? No, no. It's because I think about it a lot. Because it's like, I, you know, I'm trying to do, to do this. I'm trying to make, to make a royal trucks, too. Something I felt once, and, and, can, and I have felt since, and I know we'll feel again. So, are you saying you did that just for a good interview? Are you, are you saying you created that, like to make an image, or? Yeah, partially. Ah, but so. Also, see, because uh, well, if we accept that we're making images and we're selling them. Okay, so uh, so you do then. I gotta take meds. You 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 gotta. Okay, so, um, just, I got this, uh -huh. you know, she's just been, um, just like, you know, out on sleeping all day. Oh, okay. She's kicking too, so. Oh, but she's at home. Yeah. When, when should I, when would be a good time for me to call her? She said that she'll call you tomorrow. Oh, wonderful. Good. Okay. So, um, but you, you got a number? Yes, I, you gave me her number, yeah, yeah uh, 202. Uh, if, you, if, she, if she doesn't get a hold of you by about 11. In the morning or at yeah, night? Uh, in, the, in the morning. Okay. You just give her a call. Okay. And maybe you guys can set something. It might be like it was with me. Cause oh, I don't care. Um, I was just sitting there. I got, I got my notebook out. Uh-huh. On, uh, let's see here. I got, well, I was trying to say something about, um, I got this story. Like, you know that song, uh, Yin Jim vs. the Vomit Creature? I read about that, yes. Oh, uh, you haven't heard that? Have you heard Twin Infinities? Of course I have, yeah. Um, it's on the... You read about it? In, in, um, in Banana Fish. I, I never read uh, uh, song titles, so I didn't know... Oh, really? Yeah, so I didn't know that that was a song title, but oh, I... Oh, cool. I've heard... I've listened to the record a bunch of times, and I... And I read the, um... The interview, so, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't. See, it's so weird because it's like, like you say, signifiers, you know. And I was thinking about what, what you meant, and I, I'm just looking at. Uh, so I'm gonna say, I, I, then I just sat down and I made a list of my ten favorite albums of all time. Uh huh. Like, uh, it's really hard. You know, I mean, I think it's part of like the process of like we're you know, just making real trucks, man. I hope it doesn't get in the way. Get in the way of what? Of, of us making like, you know, like, well, first of all, making just good music, you know, and, and, and like. You mean the image? You hope the image doesn't get in the way? Oh well, I don't give a shit about that. I mean, that's something else entirely. But I, but I mean, like this, like what you said, getting like not being able to be basic. Uh huh. Is that fair? Is it, is oh, I don't think that? that you have a problem with not being basic. I think that you have a problem with not reaching, or not a problem, but that you don't reach the same set of signifiers that is normally reached. You know, for instance, if you read Maximum Rock and Roll, right. there's, a, there's a normal set of signifiers that, you know, people think that they understand what the other people are, 
are saying. It scares us. That's that to me is frightening. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, and and like it just seems so simple and like life. It's just so much better when things are, you know, are chaotic. Instead of, you know, instead of things being chaotic and people ignoring them and and, and latching on to signifiers, right? I find it pretty amusing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's different reactions. <laughs> I I, I, find I, it, I used to find it amusing, but then I I don't know. I, I guess maybe when I started, uh, yeah, I guess. Oh, I'm sure I find it amusing at different times of the day. I I just find it it's kind of surreal or something. I mean, it's so weird that these people are are actually deeply concerned with with stuff like Mohawks. You know, I mean, I just I just think that's so weird. I think that's weirder than anything I could ever do with my entire life. Yeah. It's just, I it's know, beyond yeah, me. You know. Um, well, you remember that thing that, uh, you read, you read the thing that Seymour wrote about when you guys played in Frisco, right? Uh, yeah. Right, so there you go. What, what, what about it? Well, how he, you know, he had, he had to leave or something like that. Uh-huh. So I guess he thought it was weird. Well, that's, that's the whole thing about signifiers. I mean, what his ideas about what the show were, and he felt pretty sure about it, were so different from my ideas of what it was. Right. I mean, my, I guess so, you know, my signifiers weren't basic enough. Well, I don't think there are any real basic signifiers, but anyway. Um, Biology. What, what medicine did they give you? Just now? Yeah. Uh, just uh, stomach medicine and uh, uh, more anaprox. Um, how do you feel? I feel, uh, a little up. I uh, drink some, uh, Coca-Cola. Hmm. So, uh... What's the name of the hospital you're in? Arlington. Hmm. I call it Arlington Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> how are... like, I, I got this really, I lucked out, I got this really cheap insurance, and I, I was actually, I had, I had some money, I was paying it off. So I saved up, I kind of earned the right to, like, just, check in the hospitals. <laughs> I mean, I was, I just been like checking in and out of hospitals. So you checked yourself and you didn't get stuck in there? But this time, yeah. But I got stuck in before. Do you it plan... Was like, it, was a, it was a choice of either like having charges pressed against me or... Oh, why? What did you do? Just, I just got, got caught in some b and E's. By your, by the people that you b and E'd? <laughs> you got, no, well, see, this guy was going to turn over on me. A guy you were working with? Yeah. Oh. Uh, um, but not the song. D but not what? Right. We're here, okay? And we're watching VH1. Uh-huh. That's the... Uh, Video the channel. The consensus station that, that most people can handle now. Uh-huh. So, like, the only song that, like, interests me is this, that new U2 song called uh, Mysterious Ways, right? Uh-huh. And um, we keep, you know, so we're like, okay, we're waiting for it. <laughs> but we're about to watch this movie we found. They have all these. The only movies they have here are like, uh, like they have Barfly, mm -hmm. and like a uh, Clean and Sober, mm -hmm. piece of shit. But, uh, uh, Days of Wine and Roses, uh, Panic in Needle Park, and we found this really cool one called Angel Death, which is a piece, it's like some after-school special about PCP. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna check that out. <laughs> what? No, same dude. Yeah. Same band the whole time, Evan changed the thing. Uh, so. Yeah, Bono, Bono and Vox. <laughs> See? Have you heard Negative Land, you too? No, I haven't heard it, but I heard all, I've been following it. I, man, I heard that they, they had to, they gave, uh, all the copies had to be returned and given Oh God, it is so funny. I have to, I have to make a copy for you. Yeah, oh yeah, man. I'll give you the address here too. And I'll okay, yeah, why don't you give it to me now? Uh, because I don't know it. Oh, you don't know it, okay. I'll, I'll send you, I'm going to send you something for the magazine. Okay, good. If you'll publish it, it's you, a short story. Yes, please send me that and please send me um, uh, photos and artwork. Okay. Um, so. Let's, let's Let's continue with the interview because I don't think I've answered the questions and I really like to. Uh, okay, I have tons more. Keep going, man. Okay, yeah. so. Got all night. Okay, good. Um, so, do you plan on resuming your old life of vice when you get out, or I mean, is yeah, certainly. So, so but you're you're just in for convenience sake, you know, to avoid something. And well, 
I don't know. So you don't have any They're any working on me, you know. It's a, this is definitely this is just like it's definitely it's the brainwashing thing, you know. Do you have a desire to be, you know, sober and straight? Uh, no, not really. But it's like, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> really, I don't. I don't have a desire to be clean or anything like that. What is it that you like about a life of being, uh, you know, on drugs? I, I don't like. Well, there's nothing. I mean, I like eating high. Um, but it's like, like I said, it's it's a pretty bad, you know, it's, it's really trendy to be in rehabs. Uh, I didn't say that. It's almost post-trendy. Hmm. That's, but you know what I'm saying, it's like, I don't think of it that way. It's just really like, you know, I, I don't do it because of feelings. I don't do it to like, have some, you know, try to be a badass about it. You know, it's just helped me. When, Do you know, it's it's opened me up. I mean, it's 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 your basic, you know, Timothy Leary, you know, deal. I well, I I agree with that. I just don't see how heroin does that because to me, you know, heroin and and marijuana and downers are just, you know, they just keep you from from doing and thinking and. I know they don't for me, man. Mm. They really don't. I mean, I think I have some kind of chemical imbalance that a lot of times I'll get very hyperactive on heroin. Hmm, that's strange. Speed will make me like, and coke will make me, uh, and like things like Prelude and, and other like, you know, pharmaceutical sort of like uppers. They give me a sort of insecurity. I don't know, but then again, I was doing a lot of coke this summer shooting it. That may, that'll make anyone insecure. <laughs> yeah, but no, see, but see I was, I, I would never, I never geeked, I never was paranoid, like, did you see that, you know? Mm -hmm. And basically that's why I, 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 I just quit shooting it, because people I was hanging around, you know, with were all shooting it, and they were all, like, flipping out. My ex-husband had a heart attack on it. <laughs> Is it shooting it? Yeah. Yeah, see, because, I don't know. Yeah, you know, you never know what the purity is going to be like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um... But, you know, it's just something, it's like, there's, there's lots of things in life or something, you know? I mean, I don't know, I, I think people make a real big deal about it, and it's not that much of a deal, you know? Well, in a lot of cultures, it's really accepted as an everyday thing, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, chewing cocoa leaves is a normal thing for oh, yeah, some Indians and stuff. Yeah. Um, so how how specifically do you fuck up your shows? Oh, well, like, change the set list, like, in the last minute. And it's just songs that we never rehearsed. Or thing. Mm -hmm. And just see maybe, you know, a little reaction will take place in the band and something will happen that wasn't. You know, there wasn't planned, and so you're shooting for chaos. Yeah, and and, and that it's like ironic because it's like, you know, we're, we're shooting for chaos. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, just, it's absurd, man. I mean, which is why I say that, like, you know, I I can't say that up to this point. So, I mean, so far, I don't think you know. It's like, I mean. We've made progress, but... Would you say progress towards being more natural and less um, uh, aware of yourself? Is that No, I, I mean, I feel that I'm... See, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. No, I don't think that's, like, not the goal. I mean, like, I mean, of being able to communicate this kind of thing directly mm -hmm. from us through the instruments mm -hmm. voice. And what is it you're you're trying to communicate? Just what you're thinking, and you're trying to get that directly into nervous systems. Yeah, and then see if they can get it back. It's not like a one-way thing, you know. Which is most of everything, you know, two-way, like a you know, two-way like interactive software or shit like that is like a real so new you, idea. So you you'd like to get back what they're what other people are thinking. Right. Mm. Exactly. Wouldn't that be hot, you know, and then... That would be hot, but good luck. <laughs> well, right, so we're on a Royal Trucks 
towards that goal. Well, that's, I think that's an excellent goal. Um, in your Yeah, so what's the problem, you know? It's like everything we do then is, is validated under that, under those conditions, that contract. It's validated if it works, or it's just validated just because you're trying that? No, because it's like a noble goal. Yeah. But then, so that makes you happy. But on a, on a gut level, on a basic level. In the in the inter in the um, banana fish interview, where you said it was a consciously created image, um, so did Jennifer gladly consent to play the victim role, or was the whole thing orchestrated by you? I don't, I don't even remember. I just asked. I go. Um That means wimpy? I think uh, I think it currently under the influence. That's weird. I've never seen feel like that. Melody Maker. I don't know. They said it was Ness. Ness? Yeah. How do you spell that? N A F S. N A S S, and that means wimpy. I think uh, I think it currently under the influence of the Manchester uh, house music uh, domination of the of the U K scene. Oh, they say you are under that. They, they said one song is, uh... Oh, hmm. Look, Greg, I just talked to Dan in Chicago. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, sorry, and, um, he said that Melody Maker, 11 months after the album came out, he's just reviewed it. So, it was like he read the review to me, you know, and I was happy with it. It's sort of like, right now, uh, I want, I want to get, I want people to, like, you know, not get too crazy about it. Forget about it. Let it in the back of their minds, maybe. You know, and then, you know, connect with the right people rather than, you know, having people connect with the signifiers and then connect the signifiers with us. So, I mean, I I don't know, I can't speak for Jennifer, but I've made a conscious effort in, and I didn't, you know, I do it like in my personal life as well, too, and uh, just to try to just, you know, not just get too involved in any particular, you know, not get trapped, basically. Because, I don't know, I mean, I've had, you know, epiphanies at, you know, at, at rock shows, rock and roll concerts, and with that, and not always on drugs. Um, that girl, Tiffany, that singer? No, ep epiphany. Tiffany. I've had epiphanies, just, just mystical, Transcendences, you know. I mean, using to use a term. Antithesis. E epiphany. Am epiphany. How do you spell that? Let's see, it's E T I. E T I. E P I. Oh, E P I. E P E P P H A N Y. Okay. You know, and like, you know, but I've also had like epiphanies taken, you know, taking a piss. <laughs> like it comes on, it's, you know, because I mean, I, you know, I've taken a lot of drugs, and so, you know. I've have you ever been sober for a long time? I mean, since what? you were. Have you ever been sober or straight, uh, sober and straight for a long time? Uh-uh. I would just, I was going to have a riot to get my drug history to my counselor, right? Uh-huh. I was like, you know, 13 years old. I had 13 years of sobriety. And then, after that, I don't, well, it might have been a couple of weeks, really, you know. I just looked this up, epiphany, uh, an appearance or apparition of a deity or um, other supernatural supernatural yeah. being. With that, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm interested to know what was the weakness that you, that, that uh, you found and, and worked on with, with Seymour. In Seymour. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, let me look. I'm going to turn the TV down a second, okay? Okay. Hold on just a second. Horse? He got close to us. Uh-huh. 
in a way that I, I didn't, you know, I didn't think was like professional in a way, you know? Are you saying that he shouldn't have been friends with you because he's an editor of a magazine? Oh, uh, you know, it didn't seem like he liked us very much. Why was he close to you if he didn't like you? Maybe because uh, he was the editor of a magazine and we were a band. Are you saying he was looking for an inside scoop? He was? Uh, no, I'm asking you if, if that's what you thought. No, I didn't think like that. I mean, maybe under the right circumstances, that, that would be a good, something good to say, but like, uh, you know, I mean, like, you know, I, I just would get something like, you know, what, 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 what was he doing here? You know, why, why was he here? Sort of thing. And when I think that, I mean, something's wrong. It's like there's supposed to be this. There is a situation. We are acting on it. And yet, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's really... It's just like suppressed chaos and it's not allowed to come out because, uh, you know, I didn't think he could handle it, maybe. Handle what? what? Whatever it was that was being suppressed and I didn't really think about it that much. And so, you know, we basically got drunk, I think. I think I was trying to remember that night when he came over. You know, because then, um, like I said, we, then we asked for to have the written interview, and we were going to, like, go back and make sure we contradicted everything we said. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know. Do you have a problem with relationships that aren't working relationships? Do they make you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. In other words, no. if someone doesn't have a role, does that make you feel... No, I, I, yeah, but I'm saying, well, it's like... To be a role, like he, okay, like he's imposing the role. He's the one writing the magazine. So he's, you know, he writes for the magazine. So he's the one that that, that is applying that role, man. Because uh, it's not, there's no way he's gonna get anything out of us that we aren't gonna give him. I know that. See, so what he's gonna get? He's got to take something from us that he can claim as his own. But we're the one, you know, we're the one, we're sitting on the, you know, we got it, he's got to try to get it out of us. I mean, I don't feel that way with you. You don't feel what way, that I'm trying to get something out of you? Yeah, even though you said earlier. Well, I, I am trying to get something out of you, obviously. But, but I want happened? something out of you. <laughs> I want you to get it out of me. And you felt like he was going against your will. Oh, uh, yeah, well, he was definitely going against my will, but that's beside the point. You know, I, my will would have been for him to have written this great, you know, thing that would just have made us, like, explode into the stratosphere as this band that, you know, <laughs> But it wasn't going to happen. So, what happened, happened. Well, I, th I think it, it worked out pretty strongly. I mean, I think it was a, a very strong interview. Yeah, and see, you know, like... You know, a lot of people, like, I, that's one thing I just don't like to think about, you know, things like there's no such thing as bad publicity or, you know, little rules of show business and stuff, which is why, you know, I haven't been making that much more money. You know, which takes time. I don't understand why you're not making money. I've, I mean, you've gotten, the, the Twin Infinitives album has gotten such good reviews. I know. Dan well, says it's because of all the recording costs. So, yeah. so could you tell me, I think you've told me your basic idea of a journalist, but I guess we can go back over that later. But what is your basic idea of a record company? I mean, what role, what, what role do you think is their role? Well, I think that, you know, I mean, they have to be basically, you know, they're like satisfied. Uh, yeah, satisfied. With their, like I hope you know they're as, as satisfied as who they are as I am with who I am, right? And uh, as a producer, you mean you hope they're satisfied as a producer? Yeah, they're like you know we're just we're a record company. You know, we run this record company, man, and like 
you know, and they don't hope to like eventually move into bands. You know what I'm saying? You know, like it's like a stepping stone. Oh, I'm gonna put out a few of these little bands, and then put out, you know, my, band. my own band. <laughs> exactly, you know. Huh. Which that's why, like, I was always skeptical about Gerard because he was he played with G.G. Allen once. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a rec- I think I don't know. I mean, I think of like you know Sam Phillips and like Albert Grossman, who man, you know, who managed Dan Shoppin and Bob Dylan. I don't know. No. See, Historically, because I'm saying, you know, I don't, you know, I mean, like, what's happened, it's happened. Well, going back to what you said, to give us the money, to give us the time. That's what, that's what you consider the, the, um, the uh, record company's role. Right, and then they take the thing and they sell it. Mm-hmm. And they don't, you know, it isn't like, and and, and I don't see Matador doing that, you know. It's like, <laughs> Me neither. They expect it to sell itself. Yeah. And, like, you know, obviously, if you look at what sells, it's, man, you know, like the same, I guess, sell blank records, you know. Don't you worry, Neil, that you're telling me these things about Matador and I could print them and, and then Matador would be upset with you and, and not put out your record? Well... No. Why not? I, I've noticed that... See, it, as far as I know, he never returned... See, this is like, this is something I don't know. I, I mean, it's just like... You think... Uh, maybe it's going to hurt? I don't know. But, uh, I mean... It's like we did basic tracks in San Francisco. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it cost the money that he gave us. Right. For us to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. We, you know, it's, it's the tapes are in San Francisco because we still owe the guy like 200 bucks, and it needs a lot of work. Like, I mean, another, probably another couple hundred bucks work, which is it's like nothing, okay? Uh huh. And plus, now I've been doing shit like all year here, okay? Mhm. And with old tapes and like new stuff, and I like, I'm not gonna just throw, you know, I'm not gonna give it to someone, you know, who just isn't going to put it out. Do you, so, uh, way. yeah, do you want to get the tapes back from him? From the guy in San Francisco? No, from, from, uh, so, so Gerard doesn't have the tapes. As far as I know. Ah, no. uh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then, uh. This, this weasel engineer that you speak of, is that Greg Freeman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I, I thought, you know, he was kind of putting up with us, humoring us, you know, and like, you know, you go in the studio, it's like, it's not supposed to, you know, it was just like, you know, it was, it was already, it was like, it was over, it was done, it's history, it was like, you walk in there, you know, it was just like, it was another dead culture right there, you know, the, you know, it's just like these people, their fucking lives, you know, it's like, they got their tombstone already made up, and that's the way I feel about it, you know, and it's like, that is what they call it, like lifestyle or identity. Is this Greg Freeman in particular or San no, Francisco? Everybody. Or everybody. Including yourself? No. Not you either. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I walked, we walked in there. So whatever he said, like, you know, I think that, uh, he was a weasel because he like said we shot up, we were shooting dope right in front of him, and that's a lie. Mhm. So Who did he say that to? Well, I heard that it was printed in some magazine or something. Mm. Mhm. Through Dan. Mhm. See, but I'm afraid. And I see now, like this network. That's why you know. Um. You know, I mean, I'm, I just told Jennifer that you said it, we're, we, it's a cool to come up there, so we'll come up there as soon as I get out. Okay. I asked I asked Bill about it when he came home from work, and he said, sure. And then in June, we're going to go to Europe. Fine. And conquer it. In Japan. And Japan after that. No, before. Oh, before? Yeah. Okay, and then, go, and then we'll go through Asia and Russia, too. Yeah. Oh, Russia. Okay, yeah, what the heck. It. Gotta happen. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would love to go there. Well, why do, why do you want to go there? I thought you hated Russian writers. Yeah, I hate Russian writers, but I don't know. Um, no, I, <laughs> yeah, obviously, I don't know much. 
<laughs> what? Uh, I, I haven't. I mean, I, obviously, I don't know shit because I'm sitting here in a rehab unit <laughs> with like, you know, a dime in my pocket and like, <laughs> you know, it's like, see, it's also funny. But, you know, okay, so our chosen, my chosen profession is, is like, you know, rock and roll, man. Well, I, I, I never could understand why you hooked on to rock and roll because that's just one of many types of music and I don't really... A music? It, it's just one type of music. I don't really hear rock and roll in right. your music. I mean, I hear it as something different or new or... Yeah. I mean, well, I, yeah, see, we're, we're like... I, I feel like I'm like one of the very, really, one of the real... Innovators? No, well, no. Traditionalists, to tell you the truth. Oh, you think you're a traditionalist? Yeah, see, I would just, see, that's what I'm saying, getting back, like, I speak, work with signifiers. You know, like, you say, you know, there's all this shit, like, twang guitar, the backbeat, you know, but, like, to give an example, what, you know, it's like, to me, you know, it's like, it's like that, the, the deity that appears in an epiphany is, that's what rock and roll is to me, you know, and it's like certain bands, like, get me off that way. For and instance? That was, and that's why I was making that list, you know, because it's like, have you heard this band called the Texas Tornadoes? No. I, okay. I'm pretty ignorant about music. Really? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I'd like to get this in print. Okay. <laughs> Just to see it, because it's like, I love these guys. It's like, Flaco Jimenez, right? He's like... Flaco Jimenez? Jimenez. How do you spell that? It's F-L-A-C-O. Okay. J-I-M-E-N-E-Z. Okay. And he's, you know, he's an accordion player. He's like, um, kind of like, like just north of the Mexican border. Tex-Mex type of music, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's Freddie Fender who sang this song called I'll Be There Before the Next Teardrop Falls. Mm -hmm. You may have heard that like, you know, in a restaurant or something, like uh -huh. in the 70s. <laughs> it was like a big number one country hit. And then he had another song called, uh, oh shit, Wasted Days and Wasted Nights. Oh yeah, I heard that. Okay, so he had two hits. And he's just been kicking around Texas and shit. Okay, then it's, okay, so it's those two guys. And uh, Sir Doug, from the Sir Douglas Quintet. Mm-hmm who were like, it was this, this Texas band who uh, pretended, or like, you know, they dressed up in frilly, like, English clothes, and they kind of, like, snuck in. People thought they were a British band for a while with the name Sir Douglas Quintet. And, uh... Oh. And, uh... So right now he's real old and shit. And he was, um... Anyways, so there's a band now called the Texas Tornadoes, and they all come together and play and they do like, they have this, this, this beat they have, man. And it's really, that's like the rock and roll beat, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like the feeling, right, it's like what it, what it gives you in, in, inside, which wherever you say you feel it, you know, it, it also, it's all happening in the brain. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we, re, we retranslate that according to the time. Mm -hmm. And with all the technology at our disposal, right? And, right. like, there are certain bands that, like, pretend to do that and, like, get off, you know, get, get away with signifying that they're doing that. Do you feel that the same thing was going on before rock and roll came out? No. Mm. I think it was a social condition. Mm. Other than, like, America, like, like a post, you know, with, like, all the immigrants coming in that one big batch. Mm. And then, like, with the Plymouth Rock, you know, there's certain Americans that have been there. And there's just this division, and now, you know, but then again, I'm not a critic, you know, or a journalist. I haven't seen the What is Royal Trucks video yet. What? So I haven't seen the What is Royal Trucks video yet. Oh, really? So I don't know what to ask about it. I mean, well, I, I will see it as soon as um, Jack said he puts it out, but, um, he so... Said it's ready. I'm kind of scared because it's like... It's just like more people are going to see that than uh, than have seen us play live. Mm hmm So. What what is it? Is it live shows or? Yeah, it's like where we did a sort of like mini tour. Mm hmm In uh, a few places, you know, and it's like really poorly promoted shows. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, we were like, you know, just we stayed in Chicago and then we'd drive out. It's basically, it's very long, it's like 80 minutes. Sometimes the move is not fucking Shaggy dog story set in Rome or something like that. Set in where? In Rome. Surprisingly, I find myself very comfortable speaking to you also. <laughs> you wanna, um, we just turn on this fucking movie. You wanna call me back at that other night? the fact that I'm there every night, I would like really be fucked up mm -hmm. if I had to wake up with hangovers every morning. But, um, no, I, I still drink a lot. Um, when that's I. That's pretty much, that's pretty much what I, I do right now. Neil doesn't drink at all, at all, period. <laughs> So, um, I used when I used to dance, I had to um, take speed because you know I just couldn't get up there and dance for like five hours. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I can't. I wouldn't be able. I can't really take speed or, or cocaine or anything like that. I I get totally freaked out mm. hearing my heart beat fast. Mm. It, I'm I don't know. I I. I can, I can, you know, make it through the night. I mean, I, don't, I can always stay awake. I never really get tired. Do you get along with your parents well? Um, yeah, I get along with them. I mean, just because of the fact that it's, um, 
It's like a real honest relationship. I mean, when I was younger, I mean, you know, it's like they didn't know anything about me. I mean, after I left home when I was 15, I was like, I didn't let them know anything about my life. But, um, I mean, they know, like, everything about me now. I mean, they, you know, they know where I work, they know what I do. I mean, everything. Were they hippies? So that's, uh-uh, no. They're, um, they're, like, relatively young, but they weren't, they weren't hippies. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what their scene was. I mean, <laughs> it's weird. My mother was born in Costa Rica, and, um, is she Costa Rican? Or? No, she's well. She's half Costa Rican and half uh, Irish. Mm -hmm. She's half and half. And um, I don't know. She, I don't know what the deal is really. I mean, she's forty-one now, and she. I think she. She wishes she was older, because then she would be pampered more or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. So, no, our relationship is, is pretty cool. I mean, right now, um, I'm at my father's. I've been here for a week because of, like, Christmas. But um, I guess in the next few days, I'm probably going to leave and go and stay with a friend of mine. Hmm. Do you, um, is there... What, where should I write if I ever want to send you anything, like a copy of the magazine? And oh, you could always send it to my father. Oh, okay. Can you um, give me that address? Yeah. It's, you have a pen? Yeah. It's uh, 103 Fifth Street. Uh-huh. Northeast D.C. And uh, hold on, I have to look up the zip code here. Well, I can find it in the, in the uh, post office. It should be. Because they have mail. Yeah, wait, here's the mail. Two, two triple oh two. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I probably won't be here I, after another three days. Neil and I were staying in um, different hotels for about a month, so, I mean, we, I might end up just doing that again because it's it's cheap and it's, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, get color cable TV and everything. <laughs> you you know you don't have to worry about deposits and all that shit. Do you have you know possessions? I mean, do you have like you know? Mm, not not too much. Stereo no. and we, well, we had all that stuff when we left California. We left everything there, and when we left New York, we left all of our stuff there. So it's like kind of whenever we move, we leave everything, and then we just start accumulating things again. That sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy. I like it better that way. I mean, I don't, I mean, having to move, like, a whole lot of shit around. Yeah, I know. I, pain in the ass. I always end up doing that, too. But I always have really shitty stuff anyway. I just get it from the Salvation Army, so it's not, it's not like I'm really leaving anything behind that I care about. Um, can you send me uh, a photo or any artwork? Yeah. Let me let me take that in your address. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I really got at, at what you were looking for, I guess. I mean, uh, Neil's the, the great verbal communicator. I, I have a much easier time writing things down than kind of whipping it off the top of my head. I'm I'm extremely happy with the whole thing. I think it's I think it's really interesting. It's it's really weird. Um, I mean it's unusual how you guys seem to be thinking on so many levels at the same time. It's that's probably that I think that has a lot to do with my inability to verbally communicate. You know what I'm, you know what it reminds me of, um, a little bit is either LSD or, or schizophrenia. Yeah, that's what my father always says to me. He always says, you know, jokingly, but, I mean, you know, it's just the loose definition of schizophrenia, you know, being split personality and all that. You know, I guess just recently, you know, I've seen him a lot more, and he says that, you know, he can always tell, like, you know, if I'm high, mm -hmm. I'm like one personality. If I'm not high, I've got about 
like, well, he said if I'm high, I've got like two different personalities. If I'm not high, there's about five. And he, 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 I don't know, one time he just sat down and started listing them all off. It was pretty amusing. <laughs> wow, did he have names for them? No, it was, they were just filled with a- adjectives. And wow, that's neat. Uh, the reason why I said it was not because of that, but because both of you have so many ideas shooting out, and it seems, especially for Neil, that it's difficult for him to finish one because another one's always, or several others are always crowding in. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, sometimes it's, I mean, uh, just for him to get an idea across, even to me, it's like I, usually I can read a lot into what he's saying to make it, like, uh, you know, uh, a whole, you mm-hmm. know, a whole idea, but there, you know, on on a very frequent occasion, he'll start off talking and like really won't stop for literally ten to twelve hours. <laughs> it just, it just won't stop. Wow, you know, that's pro. It's a problem sometimes <laughs> because it's just like an overload, but. Yeah, I think that's that's what happened to me last night. I I just went to bed and I couldn't go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I was just blown away. <laughs> um, okay, so let me give you my address. I got it. Yeah. Okay, it's P.O. Box fourteen ninety one. Uh-huh. And that's in Dover, New Hampshire. O three eight two zero. O three eight two O. O three eight two O. Yeah. Okay. And please send um, photo uh, collage anything. Or excuse me, paintings. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> and you'll say that he had anything to send to you. Oh, he was talking about uh, a short story that he wanted to send that oh, isn't finished. Yeah, I know the one he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll definitely get something together, like, real soon. Good. It, um, it should be really good. It'll, it'll probably be a really big, big thing, and uh, you're going to be in there with my father. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? So the um, interview you were referring to is the banana fish one, right? Yes. yes. Have I you seen that? No, I, I haven't seen that at Well, all. I can send you a photocopy to your, um, your father's that house. That would be really cool, because... I, I seriously doubt that I'd be able to find that magazine here in D.C. And I'm really curious as to, because Neil was briefly, uh, since I didn't speak to him for long, was briefly trying to describe it the way I guess you had described it to him. Mm-hmm. And it it sounded really funny because, like, both of us were, were trying to recall um, the actual event of the interview and it it didn't seem like at the time um, it didn't seem like that that's what was going on but I guess when we read it, it it'll all come back yeah it, it does seem pretty funny especially when I realized that y- you were putting putting it on it makes it even funnier yeah I'm just wondering yeah I'm, I'm trying it just seems so long ago